Hello folks, this is Sula speaking, and you're listening to a commentary video for League of Legends, this one featuring Akali. This is a pre-made game, I'm actually not playing in this game again, but this is another replay that's been sent to me, and it is featuring a full pre-made team of five. Some of the people that I usually play with, you could, I guess you could call this the Sula group, although I'm actually a latecomer, some of the other people are the first ones to start playing. This replay was sent to me by Speaker, who uses the username Sideberg and plays as Akali. You can see he's playing on a team with Diva, who's playing as Blitzcrank, with Metallion, who uses the username Noobstar, who's playing as Misfortune, with Sunrise, who's playing as Amumu, and then Cole, who's playing as Janna. So we have a full pre-made team of five, and they are queuing in what I believe is a normal game. I think this is normal and not ranked, but not 100% sure. And you can see that they're also matched up another team of five. So we have another full pre-made game here. I just happen to be the one not playing in it. Now, I had a lot of requests for more games that I was involved in. A lot of people seem to enjoy my games. The problem is, guys, that I have been really busy this weekend, and I have not had time to play League of Legends games. So it was pretty much either cast games that people were, were able to send to me, or just not do not do any cast at all. So I figured you'd rather see me cast game, some kind of games than just uh, not be casting games at all. So that's what we're going to be going with here. And Speaker provided me with this replay for Akali, who is a champion that, again, I don't I don't play and I actually don't own. So another useful replay so I can show another character, show another champion. All right, so let's see. I have not seen this video all the way through before, so I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen. I'm assuming that it's a good Akali game or else it wouldn't have been sent to me. It looks like Metallion is going to take the top lane with Misfortune and Speaker is probably going to go mid. Maybe, maybe not. And it, it looks like uh, Cole and Diva are going to take bottom lane, and Sunrise is going to be jungling with Amumu. The yeah, other team does not so. have a jungler, which is interesting. The other team apparently is not bringing a jungler, so it will be 2v1 in one of the lanes. One of them will have to take that on, so uh, we'll see how that goes. This bottom lane, I like both Janna and Blitzcrank are both useful champs, but I'm not sure I like the synergy in this bottom lane. Just because if you're going to take Blitzcrank, obviously you wouldn't take Blitzcrank unless you're going to try to crank people on the other team to pull them with your grab back to the tower. But I'm not sure that Blitzcrank has a lot of synergy with Janna, just as a pairing. Usually, if you have Blitzcrank, you want someone who can do a lot of damage real quickly, so you know he can grab them, and then you can burst them down quickly. Or you want someone with a stun, so Blitzcrank can grab them, pull them back into the tower, and and then you can hit a stun and have the tower shoot at them while they're stunned. So I'm not 100% sure that the Janna Blitzcrank pairing is necessarily the best. Oh, it looks like Sunrise is going to go for the other team's blue to start. That's an interesting play. But they, if they don't have a jungler, it's actually a pretty good way to start. And, oh well, we'll, we'll, I'll check back and see if they actually manage to get away with this. Or if the other team comes to try to get them. And Metallion does indeed look like he's going to go to the top lane. Alright, here it looks like Speaker's Akali is going to be playing against Mordekaiser here in the middle lane. Let's see, Mordekaiser's open with Regrowth Pendant. That give, will give him extra health regen. As Speaker has opened with Boots and 3 health pots. So Speaker's going to have a lot of extra health to burn with those health pots. Yeah, but he's already taking some harass. Anyway, why don't I use this opening part of the game to talk a little bit about a little bit about Akali as a character. Akali has some unique features to her that makes her different from other characters. First of all, Akali, Akali's overall role on the team is basically melee damage per second, melee DPS as people usually refer to it, but she's different in a number of ways. First of all, Akali is mostly based on doing magic damage. That is, even though Akali is a melee champ and does melee damage per second, she's not an attack damage champ. You usually will want to build her to going the ability power route, AP route, for reasons I'll explain in a minute. So that inherently makes her different. The fact that she is a is a melee champ that does mostly magic damage is kind of unusual. Secondly, oh here we go, Speaker's going back and forth with this Mordekaiser. I don't think he can win this match though, just because Mordekaiser is going to have his shield from nuking the creep wave, and that shield's going to make him very tanky, plus he's got that regrowth pendant. Anyway, things about Akali, one thing you'll notice right away is Akali is a ninja, which means, see here, this unit is a flippin' ninja. That means that Akali uses energy instead of mana. You can see the health bar. There are three champs that use energy in this game, Akali, Shen, and Kennen, the three ninja champs in this game. I guess she's technically a Kanoi chief since she's a female ninja, but whatever. We'll see how many people get that reference. Uh, let's see, so Akali uses energy. That means that her skills do not cost mana. They cost energy instead. 
general every time you use an ability it will cost energy and then it will recharge very quickly the drawback is that you only have 200 max energy and you cannot increase this through items there are some runes that will increase at max energy but nobody ever gets them they're considered to be pretty bad I think uh, they're quintessences and nobody ever buys them they're considered to be pretty terrible so uh, basically you're stuck with the 200 but it regens quickly so you can you can generally spam spill generally spam your skills pretty well if you're playing as any of the ninja champs so that's something that uh, you'll obviously keep in mind if you're going to be playing as Akali, something pretty basic. Now, Akali's passive is called Twin Disciplines. I want to bring this up first of all. You can see upon attaining 20 ability power, Akali's basic attacks deal 10% bonus magic damage, and then that increases for every for additional ability power. Similarly, for when you obtain 10 bonus attack damage, you gain Spell Vamp, and then an additional Spell Vamp for extra attack damage. So that sounds really complicated, but basically what this means is if you stack attack damage, then you will get Spell Vamp. If you stack ability power, you will deal extra magic damage. So this is why most people build a Akali uh, ability power, just because Spell Vamp is not terribly useful in League of Legends. Generally speaking, that extra magic damage is a lot more useful. So right here, you can see the benefits. You can see uh, Akali's abilities heal herself for 10% of the damage dealt. That's the Spell Vamp, and the Speaker's getting that from his attack damage here. And then here you see Akali's melee attacks deal an additional 11% magic damage. That's the other part. That's the part that scales off of ability power. And if Speaker builds Akali ability power, as I expect, then this will increase significantly as it goes along. So that's why people mostly build Akali AP as opposed to AD because they'd rather have that extra magic damage than rather have that uh, spell vamp. Anyway, right here, Sunrise is coming in to try to get a gank on this Mordekaiser. Oh, that's a nice bandage toss into a stun. Um, let's see, uh, doing more damage to this, the Ignite from Speaker. Are they going to be able to finish him off? There's the Summoner Heal, and Sunrise finishes him off with a, with a, an Amumu. Well, I don't know what that ability is called, but the ability where he hits people near him. So, wow, nice kill. Uh, even even with the Summoner Heal, able to get that kill. So, they draw First Blood, Sunrise getting the kill, and Speaker getting the assist. Very nice combination. And again, for anyone who's curious, I mean, I'm sure that this is very obvious, but this is why you take a jungler, so you can set up kills like that. Just the fact that the other t person doesn't expect you, the element of surprise is very key in setting up kills like that. Also, by having a jungler, you can gain more experience because the jungler is farming the jungle as opposed to farming lanes. It means that you can get more overall experience for your team. Alright, anyway, Speaker is now level 6, and I want to go through and have a chance to talk about his abilities while we're still in the laning phase. I want to talk about Akali's abilities. You can see that Speaker has put most of his points in Akali's Q skill, Mark of the Assassin. And if you look at the description here, you can see uh, Akali throws her Kama, I guess those are her little blades, they're called Kamas, to, at a target enemy to deal 100 magic damage, and then marks the target. Then if Akali attacks the target that's been marked, it deals extra damage and restores some, some energy. So this is... This is a useful skill because it's Akali's only ranged skill. You can see, like right there, Speaker tossed uh, his Mark of the Assassin. So it's her only ranged skill. It doesn't have much range, but you can uh, toss the little blade. And uh, if you toss it on an enemy champ, it will mark them. See, so, like, look right now, uh, Mordekaiser's marked. And if Speaker would hit him again, it would deal uh, it would deal extra magic damage. So um, useful skill. I mean, nothing spectacular, but it does give Akali a little bit of range and lets her mark enemy champs. Akali's next skill, you can see here, her W skill is Twilight Shroud. This is basically a smoke bomb, which is kind of kind of interesting. This is, I think, is one of the more creatively designed skills in League of Legends. Akali throws down a little cloud, and while she's in it, she goes invisible, so she is actually stealth. Enemy champs can't see her. Now, that doesn't make her invulnerable. She will still take damage inside the cloud, but you can't see her, so you can't target her. Of course, any area of a area of effect spells can still hit Akali, but you are stealth while you're inside there. You can see the smoke lasts for eight seconds. And while, while Akali's in there, you can't see her. So oftentimes, Akali's can get out of really ridiculous situations where it looks like they're going to die by faking people out inside the smoke cloud. Like faking like they're going to go one way and then actually going a different way. Or just waiting inside the smoke cloud until help can arrive from another lane. Stuff like that. Oh, and now Speaker's going to charge in. And it, let's see, is he going to be able to finish off this Mordekaiser? Uh... I don't think he's quite going to get it. Oh, Speaker's really low. He's got the Mordekaiser ult Children of the Grave on him. Let's see. Is he? Gonna, I think he's going to be able to make it out of this with that health pot. So, yes. They both get very low, but both of them are ultimately going to survive. Anyway, that kind of wraps up the discussion of the... It's called Twilight Child. I'll probably refer to it as a Smoke Bomb or Smoke Cloud or something like that. More of a one-point skill. You put your point in it early on, and then that's generally enough. I think it also slows enemy units that are inside it. Yes, enemies inside the smoke are slowed by 14%. Okay, so you, you can use it as a slow as well. 
Oh, now Sunrise is going to come in again. Let's see. Mordekaiser's backing off, though. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to set up, a, set up a kill here or not. And I guess he's backing off. Okay. So just trying to go through and finish up with the skills. This uh, Akali's E skill. Oh, well, here we go. Now they're coming in for a kill. Let's see. Speaker's charging in. He's got the Ignite on Mordekaiser. Is, is that going to finish? Oh, 40 HP, 14 HP. Wow. So both of them survive with sub-50 HP. Wow. Really close there. Interesting. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that they both survived because I think one creep hit would have killed Speaker and probably two minion hits would have killed that uh, Mordekaiser player. Okay, anyway, just trying to wrap this up. I keep getting sidetracked. Akali's W skill, Crescent Slash, uh, it just she hits nearby units, deals some extra damage. You can see 60 energy, uh, 7 second cooldown. And then her ultimate, Shadow Dance, is what allows Akali to charge in. She can dash towards an enemy. You can see it doesn't use energy, so it's on... The only and it has a really short cooldown. You're just limited to a number of charges, which she generates automatically. Oh, there's a kill down here in bottom lane. Oh, Sunrise must have ganked bottom lane and gotten a kill. Okay, didn't see that. Uh, yeah, so Akali Shadow Dance. That's where you see Akali charge in. She can suddenly charge towards the enemy. And the only limitation, really, you can see short cooldown doesn't use energy. The limitation is that she only has so many shadow charges. You can see she has three of them. She gets uh, gets them over time. You can see stores one up every 24 seconds and then also stores them up on kills or assists. Oh, a speaker's caught this poppy player. Let's see if he's going to be able... There's a shadow shadow dance towards him. Is it shadow dance? Yeah. Uh, there's another shadow dance, but uh, it looks like poppy's going to be able to make it back to the safety of the tower there. So it's going to be able to slip out. So anyway, hopefully you can see what the Akali gameplay style is based around. Generally speaking, Akali is not someone who's at all that great in a team fight? Oh, here comes Mordekaiser. I mean, Akali can be good in a team fight, but she's more of a one on one assassin type champ, really. That is, Akali, will, she will dash in with her Shadow Dance, then she will use, uh, hit them, hit an enemy champ with Mark of the Assassin, and then flourish her, uh, her commas for a Crescent Slash. And Akali's really good at bursting down enemy champs quickly. That's kind of what she's good at. Like, she's not going to, she's not someone who can poke back and forth, she's not someone who really can do area of effect damage in a team fight, but she's really good at 1v1ing enemy champs camps like w taking someone on 1v1 and then just bursting them down and her gameplay is really designed around that she's pretty fragile she's pretty squishy but she does a lot of damage has very high damage output so uh as i said basically an assassin type champ um kind of like a burst mage champ only she's um melee dps instead now this is a more or less a straight 1v1 speaker's gonna escape into the uh cloud of smoke but with Poppy here, he's going to have to back off that. He's not going to be able to engage. And Mordekaiser has a full shield built up too. So that means it's unlikely that he's going to be able to do too much. So he's just going to have to back off that. Oh, I should also mention Speaker has chosen to go Magi Soul Stealer first yeah, for his first item. So this means he's going to be playing sort of a risky gameplay style. I personally usually don't go for Magi just because I find it... It's, it's definitely a gamble anytime you go for it. If you're getting kills and assists and not dying, then you will become extremely powerful. If you're not getting kills and assists and you are dying, then you're going to be completely useless. So, I mean, it's a gamble, but it can be really strong. And to be perfectly honest, Akali is indeed the right type of champ to get a Majize on. Basically speaking, you want Majize on characters that snowball really hard. So, burst casters are good to get it on. Uh, Akali, as I said, her gameplay style is similar to that. Someone like Cassidin, someone maybe like Vigar or LeBlanc would fit well with them as well. Someone who needs to get kills anyway to be effective, so you might as well get Majize and make yourself more useful. So on Akali, it seems like it's it's not that bad of a buy. Uh, on other champs, I don't think it's quite as useful, but it makes sense in this situation because Akali's a bit of a um, mage type champ. Anyway, oh, now Sunrise is going to bandage us in, use the ultimate, there's the stun. A uh, speaker's going to shadow dance in, uses his ignite, he's going to shadow dance in again, and they're going to get the kill. Well done. Uh, so Speaker Sunrise teaming up very nicely in this lane to come after that Mordekaiser. If you notice, when he came forward, anytime you come forward like that, you open yourself up for a gank from the jungler. And uh, that Mordekaiser just wasn't ready. Now, to be fair, Sunrise hit on the Bandage Toss, which was a nice play. That's that's the hard part, to hit on the Bandage Toss when you're a Mumu, when you're playing as a Mumu. And Sunrise did have to use his stun, so he did You have to use his ultimate, which will be down now for the next about a, uh, 90 seconds to a minute and a half. Well, Diva's quite low here, if these health bars are actually updated. I'm going to check this out and see what's going on down here. Um, nope, Morgana missing on the Dark Binding. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not sure if these health bars are actually accurate or not. They might be, they might not be, they might be outdated um, because Speaker hasn't looked over here. Oh, uh, Blitz is going to hit on the grab. There's the silence. 
Um, oh, Morgana's gonna use her, her Soul Shackles. Cole should ult to counter that Soul Shackle. Ash gonna hit on the arrow. Uh, and see, Cole must have been almost dead there. Yeah, those health bars not updated correctly. So, kill in bottom lane there. And now Diva. Diva probably has more health than this. Um, I can't imagine he'd still be at that tower if he actually only had. Oh, see, yeah, he actually has 700 health, not 100. Okay. Let's see, Sunrise is holding mid, Metallion's been in the top lane, Speaker has bought Giant's Belt, Speaker is building towards Rylai's most likely, that's almost certainly what that is. Uh, Rylai's really good item on Akali, because let's look at what it offers, Rylai's gives you gives you extra ability power, which is good, it'll stack with the uh, Twin Disciples passive, it'll mean that you'll do more damage with your melee attacks. Uh, secondly, Rylai's gives you health, and as a melee DPS chant, like Akali, you're going to be pretty squishy. Oh, Speaker's hiding away from this clairvoyance. So you're going to need more health in order to help you survive. You are going to take damage. Wow, they have three people top looking to gank Metallion. Unfortunately, uh, he sees it. Nice word there, by the way. If he didn't have that word, he wouldn't see it. And then it also has the slowing effect, so your abilities will slow too, which is perfect for someone like Akali. So yeah, Rylai is a good item to have, and um, it looks like Speaker's building toward that now that he's gotten his Majais. Anyway, Speaker is looking to set up this Ash here. Let's see. Oh, this looks like this is looking like pretty good position here. Um, let's see. Uh, Diva has hit on a has hit on a hook. Diva's hit on a power fist stun. Um, Morgana's gonna have black shield, but it's not gonna matter. They're gonna pick that off. So that's a nice kill. Uh, kill. Uh, Diva gets the kill, and then an assist for Call and an assist for Speaker. Oh, Mordekaiser is now coming in here, but he's entering into a one on three. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Speaker is Speaker's gonna shadow dance in. He's uh, somebody used an ignite, not Speaker. He's just going cooldown. Uh, let's see. Morgana gonna use her soul shackles. Wow, two kills for the enemy team. Sunrise does not have his ult because he just used it recently. Um, there's the Mordekaiser ghosty from his ultimate, but that's gonna disappear as soon as Speaker kills him. Oh, now Sunrise's ult comes off cooldown. He's gonna uh, hit on the stun. Um, let's see. Speaker's gonna shadow dance in, toss his uh, toss his uh, mark, toss his mark of the assassin, and is gonna take down Morgana. So I think that was two for two overall. Yeah, I think that was a two for two fight, but it was a good result for the blue team, Speaker's team, because he has the Magi Soul Stealer, and he picked up two kills in that particular back and forth. So now he's up to six stacks, and that'll give him 48 extra ability power. Oh, they, they're waiting too long. They should back off here. Uh, look at Sunrise. He stayed around way too long. Now Ash is going to be able to kite him with their uh, slow arrows. So this is looking pretty bad here. Um, Oh, and he even hits on the air. Oh, the speaker's going to Shadow Dance in. Uh, he's going to hit on the slow, get an Ignite Shadow Dance in again. He just needs to toss. Yep, toss and finish. Oh, actually, his Ignite finished off. I thought speaker was going to use Mark of the Assassin, but I guess he was out of energy. So, wow, um, that looked like a really poor play on Sunrise's part, but it turned into uh, an excellent bait. Sometimes that happens. I don't think they were planning that. I, I kind of doubt that they were actually planning to set that up, but it, it ended up working out pretty well. Uh, you can see, so hope, especially you see in that fight against Ash there, you can see how Akali can really burst champions down, especially if Akali starts to pick up some early kills and can start to snowball out in front of the enemy team. So Speaker has already, as you'd expect since I was sent this replay, Speaker started to snowball out in front of the enemy team. He's 303, he's got eight stacks on Majais, and Oh, he's picked up, um, yeah, picked up Blasting Lawn and Amplifying Tome, so that's a build towards Rylai. Now up to 193 ability power, and let's see, with, yeah, here's the passive, you can see her melee attacks deal an extra 44% magic damage. So again, that's stacking up through the passive as you get this extra ability power. And of course, Akali's, uh, Akali's abilities also do more damage when she has uh, ability power. Has oh, and uh, Muki has now gotten a kill up in top lane. Okay, I'm going to pick this up again. I'm sorry, I had a little technical problem there. My replay actually went down in the middle of the recording because I got a pop-up on my screen. So I'm going to try to edit this in as smoothly as possible, but I actually did have to restart the replay all over again because I had a pop-up message on my computer which crashed the entire replay thing. All right, anyway, there was a kill in the top lane. Metallion, uh, Diva came up to top lane, and together with Metallion, they were able to get a kill on the enemy team's... I think it was their Anivia player, not 100% certain, but they were able to get a kill up there in top lane. Meanwhile, Speaker has been here farming up middle lane, and he has gotten to a point where he's pretty far ahead of this Mordekaiser player. You can see there, although the Speaker's only one level ahead, the fact that he has the three kills and the three assists and eight stacks on his Soul Stealer means that he's reached a point where he's pretty far ahead of this guy. You can see Mordekaiser's done a good job. He's bought a Negatron Cloak. I'll try to highlight that. There we go. He's bought a Negatron Cloak there, so he does have extra magic resistance, which is key in defending against an Akali, but as I said, he's still pretty far behind at this point. 
right now, it looks like there might be a fight going on up in top lane. I'll try to keep the focus up here right now. Let's see, D.Va is looking to grab somebody as Blitzcrank. If he can land a grab, they might be able to get a kill here in top lane. Let's see. Or if the other team face checks the rush. Oh, and now D.Va's health bar actually updates. You can see Speaker's heading up here as well, looking to try to score some kind of a kill up here now that he's pushed that middle lane up to tower. Still two in bottom lane going against that Morgana player. And let's see, D.Va actually does get stunned there by that Flash Rust from the Anivia player. Oh, there he lands a grab on the Poppy player, but uh, D.Va's already taken a lot of damage. They can probably kill him. Let's see, uh, that Ignite's gonna... So the Ignite finishes off, finishes him off. Speaker's gonna Shadow Dance and kill that Anivia. And then let's see, either him or Metallion are going to get the kill. Metallion's going to get the actual kill on that Poppy player. So they're gonna score two more kills. Now the... Now the Mordekaiser player has come up here. They can take down this tower and then just fight Mordekaiser. They should take down the tower first and now they can fight this guy. And yep, there they go. The speaker's gonna shout a dance in. Metallion is just auto-attacking as usual. There's the Ignite. There's, um... Uh, Mord tried to use his summoner heal, didn't do anything. Speaker, oh, he's getting very low. Is he gonna survive this Children of the Grave? It keeps ticking. And oh, the last tick! The last tick of Mordekaiser's ultimate finishes him off. Speaker, you should have uh, you should have used one of your abilities. If you had just used one of your abilities on those creeps, you could have life leached a little damage. You can see that spell vamp isn't very much, but you know even 10% of uh, a mark of the assassin tossed on a creep could have gotten probably enough health to survive that. Oh well, still 514, still in very good shape. And they did go. Well, let's see. I guess it was two for two. No, two, uh, three for two. They were able to score three kills against two deaths. Anyway, now Speaker has finished his Rylize, so he's completed that item build. So he's got Majais with nine stacks, now down from, I guess it was up to 13 before, now down to nine. So you only lose a third of your stacks every time that you die. But has also finished Rylize, so that's going to mean uh, you can see the extra health, extra ability power, and gives the slowing effect when targeting spells. Oh, looks like there's a fight breaking out down here. Cole was caught a little bit out of position. You can see Cole and Diva are defending this tower. It looks like there's th three members of the enemy team going after them here. Three members of the enemy team. Um, oh, lands the hook on, on Ash. Ash is going to flash out of that, so that's nicely done to get down Ash's flash, even if it doesn't lead to anything else here. Let's see, Poppy is on the River Mordekaiser is mid. Speaker is in an excellent position here. Um, he's just waiting for a chance to engage. If the enemy team comes forward here, Speaker will be able to get him. Oh, Ash is in really bad position here. Let's see, there's a Shadow Dance in. Um, there's another Shadow Dance there. Uh, Speaker does not have his flash. It does not have his Ignite, but he did have his Flash. He's going to flash in to get the kill. And then together with the rest of the team, they burst down Morgana very, very easily. Now, let's see. Now, Mordekaiser and Anivia look like they want to come in here and engage. They should not be engaging. That would be a 5 on 2. They will definitely lose if they try that. Um, let's see. Oh, if Diva can hit a hook on one of these two, grab him back. That would be an instant kill and uh oh he misses anivia anivia flashes out of it now they're engaging on mordekaiser speaker is shadow dancing in he's leading the charge here let's see if they can get in a mumu stun or oh cole what are you doing cole cole saving mordekaiser with the jana ult oh my goodness all right they still might be able to get this mord though if they can manage to if uh, cole can hit on a slow or a tornado pop-up um let's see uh diva's gonna go for a grab oh mord juke the other way so not gonna hit on that wow what a misplay uh, not not the best uh, Janna ult there uh, from Cole, uh, d just saving the Mordekaiser player on the other team. Uh, Cole even types welcome, so wow, that was a bit of a misplay there. Um, not not the best Janna ult. Hey, I've played a lot of Janna uh, over the uh, in my time with League of Legends. Oh, this Poppy's out of position. They they if they can get any kind of a stun or a slow, this Poppy is going to die. But uh, I guess not. Misfortune does have make it rain, but that it is only a slow, not a stun, so not quite able to get that. Oh well, so yeah, that was a missed opportunity there. I played a lot of Janna myself. I have been guilty of that on some occasions as well. Generally speaking, with Janna ult, the main thing you want to do with Janna ult is try to use it to counter ults from the other team. For instance, on this enemy team comp, anytime you see Morgana pull out her soul shackles, that's what you want to ult. Anyway, we now have a fight coming in here. Mordekaiser, Morgana, and Anivia are engaging here on the team. And so it's a straight three-on-three -three engagement here. Let's see, uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty decent Misfortune ult. I guess it did miss a lot of them. Diva's taking a lot of damage, his mana shield's gonna kick in. Speaker is shadow dancing in, he pops off his ignite on that Anivia. Anivia's in her egg. Cole, use your ultimate! Cole, use your ult! Oh. Well, I guess it's on cooldown. Anyway, they are going to finish off that Morgana. She got off a good Soul Shackles, but um, five on it was a five on two situation there, and they just burst down Morgana before her Soul Shackles ult could, um, could trigger. So they just killed her really quickly and then finished off that Anivia, and Speaker scored 
at least one more kill, either one or two more kills, I'm not 100% sure, that gets him up to 15 sacks on the Soul Stealer. Speaker is going to this tower, I'm not, I don't fully agree, I mean, they should get Dragon off this, but they should have just all pushed this tower, um, if they had all pushed with four together on this tower, they definitely would have gotten this tower down, and then they could have backed off and taken Dragon, so I think they should have gotten that tower first and then taken Dragon. Oh well, still not a bad play, but I think they, I think they could have gotten this mid tower, and the other team is considering surrendering at this point. It's not that close, but the game isn't over. I mean, nobody's taken Baron, and this this team still does have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They still have 9 towers up, so I would say it's a little early to surrender. I guess I'm surprised it's that close. Let me see. Now that we've got a minute here, let's back off, look a little bit at the at the stats of the game. You can see Metallion's having a very nice game as well. 304, most minion kills in game, 136. Considering he was in a 1v2 lane for much of the game, that's very impressive. Well played. Speaker, we've been following his... Obviously playing really well. Um, Sunrise having a great jungle ganking game so far. 305. He's pulled off some really nice ganks. Um, they pulled three here in top lane to go after Speaker, but it looks like he was able to get out of that. Either the CV or possibly a ward let him know that they are coming. So nice, nice job to escape that. Um, let's see. Cole and Diva not as strong, but still playing pretty solid games, I think, there. Let's see. Mordekaiser has a great farm, but he is 3-4 is not, not all that great. And the rest of the team, the rest of the enemy team is not doing that well in terms of farming. Of course, that's because they had only had one solo um, and then two duo lanes, so you'd expect that. D.Va uh, has gotten caught out of position here. He's he's in a 4v1. Let's see, he's got Mana Shield is going to trigger, but that's not going to be enough. Speaker's going to uh, dash in here. Oh, we've got a Moomoo stun in the Misfortune Ultimate. Oh, what a nice play. Perfect team play. Let's see, now Speaker's going to finish off finish off that Poppy player. And uh, let's see, there's... Let's see, Matayan was able to finish off Morgana. Uh, let's see, Shadow Dance in to get that Anivia. Now they just need to finish off this Mordekaiser player. Let's see if they can do that. He's very low, but I think he's going to escape. Uh, let's see, Ash is going to finish off Metallion there. Uh, Cole is going to get away very low. And oh, Speaker got taken down. Where did that happen? I must have missed that. Where is, a, where is Speaker Zakali? Oh, he must have gotten taken down by Mordekaiser's ult. Uh, must have gotten taken down by Children of the Grave again. I must have missed that play. Okay, so the other team actually did okay there to, to score two kills at the end. They were able to get Metallion's Misfortune and Speaker Zakali, so that that uh, is going to cost him a few more stacks. But overall, that fight... I don't know, I guess that fight was a relatively even exchange, even though it seemed like see, even though it seemed like Speaker's team was winning that pretty solidly. The Amumu ult into a Misfortune ult was really well played. That's just a very, very strong play. There's a lot of synergy between these two champs. Ideally, Sunrise will bandage toss in, and then into an ult to stun the enemy team, and then Metallion, if he can get off a full Misfortune ult um, on the rest of the team, that would just do an enormous amount of damage, so if they can pull that off, then... Um, look, they were able to do that successfully in that last fight. If they are able to do that again, it's going to bode really well. And then, of course, while they're also stunned with a Moomoo Moo alt, Speaker can just dash in with, with Shadow Dance and start bursting them down. Let's see, Speaker picked up Sheen. Um, again, useful items. Uh, synergizes pretty well with Akali. Every time that Akali uses an ability, you'll get the additional benefit. You can see uh, uh, your base damage is increased by 100% for your next attack. Since Akali has low cooldowns, that that's a... Uh, an item that works pretty well with her. And then a Blasting Wand to go with that. Um, let's see, probably building towards, I guess, Lich Bane, I think, is, is what that builds to. Diva taking down this turret over here, so well done. Um, let's see, that means that it's uh, three towers for the blue team, no towers for the purple team yet, so they're pretty far ahead in that metric as well. Now it looks like everybody's gathering up. It looks like another fight middle. Oh, nice hook by Diva. Manages to grab that Mordekaiser. Mord's probably not the one they want to grab, though. And yeah, he's he's building straight tank, so he's too tanky. Um, okay, let's see. Metallion in pretty good position here. If they can land another Amumu stun on this team, Metallion will be in great position. That's the thing about soloing Mordekaiser. Um, if if he, even if he gets all that farm, if he's building straight tank, not that useful. Oh, another great, uh, great uh, Amumu stun. Oh, Metallion should have ulted a little bit sooner. He waited just a little bit long, but they've caught this Mordekaiser. Speaker's dashing after that Anivia player. One more hit. Now Anivia's been egged. Uh, put in her egg form. Uh, Mordekaiser still behind the rest of the team. Speaker's going to get hit with the um, with the ult again from Mordekaiser, so he is pretty low. Anivia's reborn due to her egg form, but now that, that now that will be down for the next five minutes, uh, and they've got a pretty good push going. So two for zero. Oh, almost. Duva almost hit on that hook there. So two for two for zero. Pretty good exchange there. 
And Speaker, I think, picked up another kill. Um, let's see, they're pushing on that tower. Pretty good push here on this tower. Basically, they just need to protect Battalion as he fires on this tower. Poppy knows that too, though. She's going to go in there. Oh, good good ult, actually. That was a pretty good Janna ult. Uh, able to heal some damage, push back the attackers. Now they're backing off here. Diva's very low. He's been ulted by Poppy. Looks like he's going to make it out, though. Uh, let's see, Ash is a lot of low people on both sides, but they probably should just back out of this because now people are reviving. Ghost going off. Poppy's chasing Battalion. I'm going to charge in there. Battalion Italian's very low. Can he survive this? Oh, he's going to go down, but Speaker's going to shout a dance in and pick up the kill on Poppy. Let's see. Now, um, let's see. There's the Janna slow, or it would be slow, but Black Shield protects it. Speaker's going to shout a dance in again. Uh, there goes the Ignite on Morgana. Going to take her down very easily. S uh, Sunrise is going to bandage toss on onto Mordekaiser. He's going to freeze in there. And uh, Speaker's going <laughs> to, once again, another shout a dance into Ash. Just picking off another kill, and there we go. 20 stacks on the Magis, uh, which gives the full ability power and the 15% cooldown reduction. So Speaker is probably now pretty close to maxed on cooldown reduction. I guess he's not maxed on cooldown reduction, but uh, he's going to have 15% lower cooldowns, and that makes a big difference. So wow, uh, a, a, just a nice fight there. They, the other team did manage to get a kill on Metallion, but then Speaker just kept charging in. And that's the thing about Akali. You could, as, I mean, I mentioned how she's a snowball champ. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but every time that Akali gets a kill or an assist, she gets another Essence of Shadow Charge. So if you're dashing in with Shadow Dance, you can, you know, if you dash in and get a kill, you'll then get another charge, and then you can Shadow Dance again onto someone else. And if you get a kill or assist, you then get another charge, and, you know, you can see it just keeps snowballing over and over again. Um, yeah, so Speaker has now finished Lich Bane. You can see it gives mana. The mana is useless on Akali, so it, again, maybe not the most optimal item, but other stuff that works really well. Ability, power, magic, resist, movement, speed, and you can see 100% chance when an ability is used that your next attack deals an extra 100% of your ability, power, and damage. So that's what Speaker was, was going for there. Cole's picked up an Oracle. That's a nice buy on Janna. Janna, great character to get an Oracle on. I'm not sure why Speaker's recalling here. Going back to base for something. I don't know. I'm not sure what you would want with 800 gold, because you can't buy another Blasting one. Oh, he wanted a Negatron Cloak. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the enemy team is... Yeah, the enemy team is mostly magic damage, if you look here. Ash is Ash is attack damage, Ash is AD, but Morg is magic damage, Mordekaiser is magic damage, Anivia magic damage. Poppy... Poppy is a mixture of physical and magic damage right now, but most of their team is magic damage, so that makes sense. Uh, makes sense to stack the magic, magic resist against this particular enemy team comp. All right, anyway, let's see. So uh, Cole has picked up the Oracle, as I said. Good item to get on Janna. Uh, Sunrise has picked up a Banshee's Veil. Good choice there as well. Uh, and now, like, look at this. Speaker is just so far ahead. He can just Shadow Dance in. Look how much damage he did. Oh, he's going to Shadow Dance to a minion and then Shadow Dance from there onto Morgana and finish her off with Mark of the Assassin. Uh, Kali tossing her, her uh, what are they called? Her katas? Kamas. Tossing her kamas. So, wow, I mean, yeah, and again, that's the kind of stuff you can see. Oh, uh, Mordekaiser, why is he going in? I'm not sure why he's going in to engage here. Oh, it's because he's got friends here. Okay, so yeah, the, they don't want to fight this. It's a four on three. That's a bad engage. Mordekaiser now is a guardian angel, so he's very, very tanky. Uh, you can see Force of Nature. Diva is backdooring here in bottom lane. Uh, pushing that bottom lane, so now it's a four on four here in mid, so they can now engage us. Um, let's see, uh, they've caught that Mordekaiser. Um, everybody is focusing their damage. Does have a Guardian Angel, so he'll revive. Meanwhile, Diva is still back during this base. The enemy team is not paying attention, and Cole is actually going to get that kill with Janna uh, howling her tornado, I think it's called Howling Gust or something like that. Alright, anyway, Diva's nearly got this tower, but now the enemy team is coming after him. Uh, he is going to die here, but he's nearly finished off the tower. So that actually, even though he died there, that was a pretty solid play, because you can see, if uh, Speaker's team engages and forces a fight here, they can nearly get that. Oh, the Speaker is going to dash in. Nice, a Mumu ult, a Mumu ult into Misfortune ult again. It's just wrecking the team over and over again. And let's see, uh, now they're focusing on Nivea, who is very squishy. Um, they just need to get one or two more hits. Oh, she's going to be put in her egg form. Now, let's see, Cole and Speaker and Sunrise. Uh, Cole, you need to use your Janna ult to counter this Soul Shackle. Use your Janna ult. Uh, not doing it. That was the time to use it. You can see the, the ultimate is up. Um, should have used Janna ult to counter that. Uh, but, wow, Speaker just has so much burst at this point in time. So much ability power and so much damage. Um, Cole... Maybe you, sh you should maybe use Janna ult now at least to heal up the team because everybody's close to death. Then you could keep, you could keep pushing if you healed up. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get this inhibitor because the enemy team is going to start reviving. Yeah, people are going to start um, coming back to life. And let's see, Sp yeah, Speaker's doing a ton of damage, but he can't chase into the Nexus turrets. And now Ash and Poppy have revived. Yeah, they're going to have to back off out of this. Oh, oh, Metallion dodged that. How did that hit him? I swear, he did you see that? Did you see that? He was to the right, and then the arrow hit him. I, I don't know why that happened. Uh, he clearly dodged that arrow. Wow, um... 
little game, a little buggy sometimes. I guess the the area of effect of the arrow is slightly larger than the graphic on screen. Interesting. Oh well, but just to go back to that earlier point, yeah, Cole, if you're watching this, whenever you see Morgana's soul shackles pop out, just just hit R and you will instantly counter Morgana's uh, ultimate. And that would have been really useful because it would have healed up the team. And Diva, well no, Diva was already dead, but um, who else died in that last fight? I guess it was Sunrise. Sunrise was really low and he was getting shot by the tower. And that if if that uh, Janna Monsoon had gone off, he might have been able to live. So yeah, something to keep in mind. I know that Cole hasn't played very much Janna. I know that that's a champion he hardly ever plays, but uh, yeah, anytime you see an area of effect ultimate, you want to pop your Janna ult to counter it. That's one of your, kind of the important reasons why you pick Janna. Anyway, Diva is backdooring up here again, and he's gotten another turret. The enemy team is is sort of not been paying attention to this as well as they should have, and then he's going to overdrive and use his extra movement speed to just boogie out of there. Blitzcrank, not the best at backdooring, but with his overdrive, he actually has pretty good movement speed, so he can do it semi-effectively. I mean, I, he's no Twisted Fate, he's no Master Yi, but he can do it decently at um, just using his movement speed buff. So yeah, they've now gotten a lot of towers. There's only three towers left. Uh, speaker's team, their next goal should be this inhibitor. They should be looking to push the bottom lane. Looking to go for that. Oh, Cole has gotten caught. Cole got, has gotten caught by an Ash Arrow. He's going to flash out of it. He should use he should use his ult to blow them back. Um, that would have saved him. But looks like he is going to make it out of here. Okay, so right now it's a 5 on 4. They probably don't want to look to engage this because Speaker's not there. If Speaker gets back and joins the team, then they can look to engage that. So Cole fortunately able to escape there. He was caught out of position. Morgana protecting herself with Black Shield there. See right there, the grab did nothing because she was Black Shielded. All right, anyway, Speaker going to engage, dash in. Let's see. Um, Poppy's going to pop her ultimate. There is a... Oh, nice bandage grab by Sunrise. He's going to trap three more than WoW. So well done. Um, Poppy is going to dash in. Again, Cole, use your ultimate. Counter the Soul Shackles. Um, not going to do it. But anyway, they just have so much damage now. Can they get Morgana? No, she's going to make it back into the fountain. Just barely managed to make it out. So that's a three for one there. And they're going to score this inhibitor. And uh, yeah, Cole, use your ultimate now. Heal up the team. You, you have Janna ult. Like, everybody's low. Use it to heal this team. They could really use the healing here. Oh well. Anyway, uh, let's see. We're gonna go out to this tower. Uh, Metallion's getting fired on by the by the by the Nexus turrets, um, and now he's gotten caught with a uh, frostbite again. Anyway, a lot of stuns between these two. So yeah, they sh that's a good play. It looks like they're gonna back off and go for this top tower here. That's a safer play than trying to break these Nexus turrets. Once they get down that third in him, they can just take Baron at leisure, and then the game will be uh, over for sure. Oh, nice bandage shots by Sunrise in there. Didn't turn into anything, but he was able to force a flash. Uh, Speaker is now arrowed by um, now arrowed by Ash. Nice Janna shield to keep him alive there. There's another. Oh, Speaker dashing in with Shadow Dance. That Ash is really low. Um, let's see. Oh, Sunrise with the great bandage toss. Wow, great played. You see that? That's a total skill shot and hit on that perfectly. Um, I guess they're not going to be able to get this inhibitor. They need to back out here. Mord playing very aggressively. Oh, he's come too far forward. They're going to be able to burst him down. The Italian's going to get the kill. There's another misfortune. Oh, now finally the Janna ult, although it gets interrupted. Uh, speaker's going to take down Poppy yet again for 15 to 7. Oh, and the other team's going to surrender. So uh, hold on. I'll have to screenshot this because it doesn't get saved on the replays. And wow, that is a really nice game there. Uh, I, I'm not sure why they surrender when the game would have ended in, you know, maybe Victory. 30 seconds anyway, but oh well. Anyway, let's go and look at the results. Let's see, that was indeed a very good Akali game, 15 to 17, full stacks on Majai's 20 stacks, 523 ability power at the end of the game, so you can see just a runaway Akali performance, well done speaker. Metallion had a game that was overshadowed by speaker, but a actually played almost as well. You can see he actually had more minion kills, 192. 10, 3, 11 with Misfortune is really good. You can see the Infinity Edge, Starks, Last Whisper. Very, very strong game. Played in the 2v1 lane, so very well done, Battalion. Sunrise, I thought, had a tremendous jungle game. Just was all over the place. Kept coming in from the side lanes. Kept coming in and getting killed. Bandage tossed into a Mumu ult a bunch of times. Really well done. Diva not as strong with Blitzcrank. You could see 2, 5, 6 was not involved in as many of the fights but did some nice backdoor pushing on side lane, so well done there. And Cole, uh, some misused Janna ults to say the least. I know that Cole doesn't play Janna that much. I can afford to be more critical because I play Janna a lot and I sort of have a better idea of where and how to use Janna. So obviously as you play Janna more often, you'll get more of a more of a sense of where and how to use her ultimates. But the actual item build is quite good on Janna, I think, in terms of itemizing her. As far as the enemy team, uh, they didn't build particularly poorly for the most part. I thought I think their item builds are pretty good. It's just that they were really 
uh, just taken down by the snowball effect with Speaker just getting so strong early on and Metallion getting almost as strong early on. The one problem with their team comp is too much magic damage and they probably should have a jungler that would make it so that they wouldn't be dividing the experience up in the side lanes amongst four champs and that's part of the reason why the two solos on Speaker's team just were much stronger because they weren't dividing up their experience. Also, on this team comp, you probably don't want to put Mordekaiser in the solo lane. I think Ash or Anivia would have been stronger choices there just because their actual damage dealers and carries as opposed to being, you know, well, tanks. Okay, overall though, I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fun to watch. It, I was able to get into one part, albeit one very long part. So I hope that that was useful. One thing I do want to mention is I'm trying to get more of a word out for League of Legends. So I have created a forum thread at the League of Legends forums for this, and I'm going to put it in the in the comments underneath this video. So if you are interested, if you want to help me get the word out about these videos, feel free to go ahead and post in that thread or upvote it. Right now it's just being ignored because I'm the only one who's posted in it. So if you want to help me out, feel free to go ahead and post in that and upvote that thread. Otherwise it'll just get ignored. Again, tomorrow night will be Tuesday and we'll have my usual viewer game night. So if you're around, feel free to check us out. That starts at 6 p.m. and I hope to see some of you there. So until then, take care guys and I'll see you again soon.